Fair warning, this video is gonna be an absolute mess. I'm gonna do my best to make it good, but we're back in Florida. It's still gross in case you're wondering. Got picked up by the squad at the airport. So Tommy rolled in with the truck, and then Alberto rolled in with the Mustang, because I gotta go to Njuku right after this, and they didn't wanna have to go home to get a car, and then run out of time and get stuck in traffic. But what's even cooler is we are going right now after this to go look at a car, which I'll fill you in a little bit more after the fact. While mad scientist Alberto is doing some... Uh, Science? Yeah. Why is that bubble there? So there's actually an E85 pump right by the uh, airport, which is pretty convenient. All right, have fun doing this part. How, how am I supposed to do that? You gotta, I always put it over the trash can and like, you're gonna get covered in E85. We got wet wipes though, it's fine. <laughs> They're testing the content of the E85 right now. I'm gonna go get some coffee so I don't die. Close, but still not sheets. Don't know if I'm gonna film it because a lot of times looking at uh, cars, it's kind of awkward with uh, sellers and stuff that you don't know or anything. But basically my thought process after driving around Tommy's Evo and spending a lot of time in Connecticut, I do want to have some sort of like beater car slash winter car slash rally car that we can mess around with. Um, kind of went through the thought process of like an STI or like a WRX and the Evo just kind of came up because I know the Evo's engines are a lot more reliable and I don't really feel like dealing with Subaru problems, even though I've always wanted a Subaru since I was little. Um, I just don't really feel like dealing with that. So, with this thought process, maybe like an hour later, I found a rebuilt title, non-running Evo 8 that's just right down the street from the airport. So I was like, oh, why don't we just go look at it after the airport? So we're going, Alberto's coming with us, and he actually used to be like an Evo expert. He used to work on a lot of Evos and stuff, so he's pretty confident that uh, he'll be able to get a pretty good idea just by looking at the car, if it's something worthwhile that he could fix easily. Um, so yeah, that's the process. Uh, hey, it's cafe. Um, I don't know, do you, what do you, what do you, how do you feel about this? Good idea, bad idea, impulsive? It's impulsive, but a good way. Yeah. I think it would be fun, and I personally like Evos, so I'm excited if it all works out that we get to mess with something that's not a 240. Was, yeah, well, that's really cool. <laughs> but what's really cool about it to me is it's just, it would be a completely different purpose, style build than what we normally do, and that I wanna kinda build it more like a rally car and just make it very functional, but like rally spec. So I can't explain it, you'll just have to wait and see. That's that's what I wanted to say. I, I, have, I have images in my head of what I want it to be. Kind of a cool surprise, Alberto was telling me when, as soon as the hood got popped, this is actually an Evo 7 JDM engine that has like air injection. Alberto, you want to tell me a little bit about this? So that's uh, air, the, the rally anti-lag, so actually has air injection to the exhaust manifest, a true rally anti-lag that comes factory equipped on the Evo 7 engines. Apparently this car was actually bought by a rally team and they were going to make it into a rally car, but it was too nice. So they decided not to, but um, it was in a little front end collision, but nothing that we can see right now. I don't think there's any frame damage or anything. The problem is it doesn't run and we just want to make sure we can compression test it before we even decide to make an offer or not. It's in pretty good shape though. Not too bad. Missing a few little things here and there. It's definitely been sitting, but I like that it's black. Definitely a, a replaced um, radiator support. You can see a little bundle here, plus they bend this back. You can see it doesn't line up exactly where it was, but it's pretty straight. There's no like frame damage. So it was a minor collision. Um, you can tell this is definitely a new radiator. Yeah. It's like brand new. Also definitely an aftermarket manifold. It's missing an, it's missing an exhaust, but overall it seems and like- you're missing headlight bulbs. <laughs> the more that Alberto looks into this, the more we're realizing is missing from the car. So it might turn into one of those things where it's more headache than it is good. If we uh, could just find one that's already put together and just spend a little bit more money, but. If it's for the right price, it might be a cool little project. We're going to get jumper cables so we can compression test the car, but uh, my biggest concern right now at the moment is Alberto has a tendency to kind of overlook how much of a project something is when we go to look at cars, and we end up getting a car that turns into a month-long project. So I really want to make sure that this isn't something that's going to eat up a ton of time, and it is relatively simple. Navo, what do you think? You're an Evo guy. You know Alberto better than anyone else. Don't want to get into too much trouble with that car, so it got to be right. The yeah. price gotta be right. I think the best thing about it though is Alberto seems really excited and when Alberto's excited about stuff, he tends to get stuff done fast. So that's definitely something that we can work into our advantage because he yeah. loves the Evos. That's, that's a, it is. No, that, that's yeah. seriously a selling point of the car. Yeah. When I messaged him and Alberto's like, oh, Evo? <laughs> He's like, all right, we might actually get this project done. Yeah. The engine wasn't really spinning right because it uh, probably has been sitting for a few years. Alberto sprayed some oil in there to try to get it turned over and then the starter stopped working so we can't even compression test it. So. I think we're just gonna call it off on this one. Kinda sad because that car was kinda perfect for what I needed. But I guess I'll settle for this white one right here. I guess this'll do. It's not as nice as the black one, but it'll get the job done. I, don't, I just didn't want a car like this beat. I wanted one a little bit better shape. 
to go trash it. This beat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude, look, your, your wheels are so much brake dust on them, they look blue. Hey, that's racing bad for you. You crazy. <laughs> With all the unknowns of that car, between not knowing if the trans is good, not knowing if the clutch is good, not being able to turn it on, missing trans sub harness, missing a TPS, all the random other stuff that needed to be buttoned up. I think the number that we wouldn't really want to budge over was like five grand, and I think the number that they didn't really want to budge under was like 6,800. So to be honest, I think that uh, we were just much too far off on that. And our logic behind the five grand was, you know, worst case scenario, needs new clutch, needs new trans. Um, to get the car like in, oh, it needed new headlights too, and new bulbs. To get the car in the order that it would need to be in would cost about 10 grand, and then it's still a rebuilt title car. And you can buy like a similar condition one that isn't rebuilt, like a clean title one for around like 12, 13, seems like they kind of hang around. So uh, just not that great of a deal. It doesn't really make sense. It'd be a lot easier just to get one that already works instead of putting a bunch of money and time into that one. Although that one did have factory handy lag, which is pretty cool, if we could have even gotten it to work. Before I start filming anything or anything in regards to the S15 update, full disclaimer, me and Bubba are basically zombies right now. No sleep. It just started hitting me. You haven't been getting much sleep either. No. All right. I'm trying, but. So, I think I've discussed before, I don't remember, well you guys probably saw the color already on my Instagram, but it's really important when you're building a race car or whatever to powder coat the car a light color so you can see if there's any leaks or any sort of thing. Like if the car's dark, you can't really see what's going on. What color did you want to do the car? White. Green. Yeah. Anything not colored, you know. And you guys know me, I have to be a little bit extra about it. So, if you haven't seen this on Instagram yet, this is basically what came about with the color. Um, the idea kind of came from a little bit of a mixture of the Z, like that orange color that I really like, and then I really like the copper on the S13, so it's kind of like a lighter version of that. Um, the tricky thing was we couldn't really do a candy color because the candy colors don't really last as well. They chip easier for some reason, right? Uh, yeah, because once you have multiple layers of powder coating on it, uh, just like with paint, if you have a lot of layers, the thicker it is, the more brittle it becomes, and a small rock will just chip it right off. Which isn't fun when the whole entire car is powder coated. So this is just one layer, correct? Yes. And it still kind of has the depth and look of something that has multiple. This isn't actually my engine, this is just a mock-up engine. So you guys can get an idea of how cool this is gonna look. Um, I did actually have the Garrett 3582 RS polished, so it's pretty cool and it pops. Anything you wanna talk about specifically up here? I don't know. <laughs> he's working a, on it? He's a, he's a tired bub right now. <laughs> um, so a lot more of the car was actually assembled. You said you had all the body panels and everything on earlier? Uh, yeah, we've, uh, I've been Mocking stuff up, remocking stuff up, putting stuff in, taking it out. There's a lot of stuff getting clear coated uh, with powder coat so that it uh, doesn't oxidize with time and weather. Uh, so a lot of things got taken back out earlier today to go out. So next week it'll be farther along. The main purpose of me stopping here today is just because I'm going to Germany and I'm not going to have the opportunity to film another update for like a week and the car is going to completely transform in that week. So I wanted to stop by and try to film at least something so it's not just like this crazy transformation without any sort of logical update. Um, I gotta get one of those covers for this. You seen those? No. Yeah, there's like these little like covers that this dude makes that make that look so much prettier. You're gonna love it. Yeah, yeah. on order. I mean, I tried cleaning up as much as I could. But, yeah. Uh, age. I don't even know what to talk about, so if you wanna highlight anything, feel free to highlight anything, but uh, it's just it's just really crazy how legit everything looks now that it's all powder coated everything looks oem i want to go zoom in on some of these brackets the bracket for the uh, reservoirs looks so rad this looks like it's meant to be there yeah we spent a lot of time on brackets yeah i mean 90 uh, percent of this car is brackets so i don't know if we've mentioned it before but we did end up doing full wise fab front and rear for this car couldn't really decide what color to do the rear subframe so we just went kind of basic with a like metallic silver or gray, whatever you want to call it. Since the car's rear mount radiator, of course, we have a water pump that is electric. Do you want to give some sort of details or facts about this, about how it pumps gallons and gallons of water per second or something? Uh, it's a 55 gallon per minute uh, water pump. It's made by Mezier. We use it on the race cars. Uh, it's standard issue to me. Another thing that's kind of cool about this setup that uh, may not come to mind when you're thinking about it right away, when you have a rear mount radiator, you have all the extra water in the system that goes from the back to the front of the car and more volume keeps the car cooler longer so you can be on track longer without the car heating up. There's the craziest little battery in the world. 
You got any crazy facts about this battery? Uh, it is, it weighs 4.5, 4.6 pounds. Um, it's a lithium ion battery. Uh, they're nice and light, they're small, fit in small places. <laughs> Showed you guys a quick change before. Uh, obviously now it's mounted on the powder coated subframe, solid subframe bushings. Now we're not gonna go into too much detail on it right now until the front gets mounted, but we do have BC's ER series coilovers on this car. It's a two way and uh, we can go into a little bit more detail about it once, we're, once we have everything together and can kind of talk about how it's set up and everything. But um, definitely very stoked. I mean, you can see how long the stroke is. Pretty absurd. All the stroke. I know. So we're actually gonna have this car, um, our goal is to get it under two fists of wheel fitment with the fender. Um, I don't know, I, that's, that's a little little low for me. Yeah, do you think we'll be able to do that and like keep the suspension geometry correct? Uh, I don't know. We, uh, we went with like Ford make some like crazy monster truck flares for this car. Um, whoa, that's rad. I feel like I didn't see this before. How you covered all this up? Yeah, I never like noticed that. Refinished. Wow, so that's gonna keep all the smoke out of the cabin. Yeah. That's sick. You wanna do that to my S13 when I put over fenders on it? Sure. Don't don't say yeah, don't agree. No. <laughs> never. Yeah. You don't want more work. Again, as we've said before, a lot of it is just kind of preparation and taking measurements and getting stuff coded, getting stuff all ready to go, and then it's gonna be a very quick assembly process. But uh those that know know it's coming along. Fit, refit, yep. refit, and then finalize. I never knew how to like make these look nice again, so how did you do this? Uh, we had our powder coater, um, we dipped them, so it took all of the vinyl, all of those, all the messed up surface down to bare metal, and then he just re-powder coated it to a factory look, and uh, so now they look brand new. It's so rad. Got the carbon roof chilling right here, and we actually did get a carbon trunk for it since my other one had all those holes in it. Uh, you said you were gonna try to cut out a hole in it? Yeah, we'll get a small vent in the back side of it. Oh, it'll be cool. We got all the arrow just chilling around. If you guys have an S15 by chance and you want like a vertex body kit, my old kit, it's just gonna take up space. I'm not planning on buying another S15 anytime soon, so if you want it, hit me up. What are the odds? Do you think it'll happen? I bet there's someone. Maybe. Out of LZ car. Part. This guy. Or if someone wants a cheap S15 front end, I got headlights, I got a hood, I got a bumper, fenders. And it's all metal, except the bumper, yeah. Great deal, I'll hook it up. I had no idea that someone sells a pre-made S15 rear window. They don't. Well, they do, but they don't have them anymore because their mold is messed up, so I had to make my own. And what is this? This is actually an S14 uh, Lexan windshield that I cut and reshaped for an S15 rear back window. And how's it fit? Pretty good. Let's see. Sure. <laughs> Boom, OEM right there. That does fit really nice. So how do you go about like measuring the template for it? Um, lay it on there, draw it, cut it, lay it on there again, trim it, lay it on there again and trim it. Measure twice, cut five million times? Yes. Yep. I'm not good at that. I'm too impatient to do stuff like that. So anyway, like we always say, the next video you will start to see a lot of progress. There is a lot done on the car. And uh, once I get back from Germany, it's gonna kind of stink because we'll miss a lot of the process. But uh, they do have people on media that are gonna get some footage so I can uh, show you guys more of the process. But Bub's been working his butt off. We're all zombied out here. Probably not the most ideal to make, I, not, I can't even speak right now. Probably not the most ideal day to make a video, but it's hot. And this thing is coming out rad, so. In case you don't know, it's gonna be revealed at SEMA at the Turbo by Garrett booth. And uh, it's pretty exciting. It's gonna be sweet. Also, Bub went Tommy F yes spec. You were inspired by Tommy, right? Like, he was, he was the person that inspired you to zinc coat my bolts? I had never even heard of him until everyone was Instagramming, <laughs> saying I was doing Tommy F stuff, and I was like, okay. That's pretty common uh, practice in the race car or uh, restoration world to zinc coat all the factory bolts so these subframe bolts rather than buying new ones you can just get them zinc coated and then they last and look beautiful instead of just putting old rusty looking stuff on the car all right I got a challenge for you how strong are you think you can lift this car up Me? yeah sure. I make myself look like a pussy. wow this guy <laughs> he's in a funny mood today watch the difference watch him lift it and then watch me lift it all right let's see you lift it look at that effortless 
I told him this is what you should do. Here, hold the camera. Because I was like, it, it looks like it would be really heavy, and then you guys would think that it's this heavy thing, and Bub's like this super strong man. So I told him, I was like, like that, and then it looks like really heavy. But he's just like, la -di -da. How much do you think it weighs right now? Uh, well, with the motor and everything, yeah. You're probably like 2,000 pounds. So you just lifted 2,000 pounds. No, I probably just lifted like like a couple hundred. Four, five on a pivot with a front heavy car. Yeah, they don't need to know that. If you guys do need to pick up anything from Minjuku, uh, just a reminder. I do have a free shipping code. I'll put that information down in the description and then we'll be back here in a little over a week and film the more progress that has been happened. Given that I leave for Germany in less than 24 hours, it probably isn't the smartest thing to do in the world, but the organizer of this competition that I did last year, uh, the competition at Sebring, I don't know if you guys remember that I won it, was kind of convincing me to try to come back and defend my title and run this competition again. So. In tomorrow's video, we're gonna be doing another competition with the S13, which, by the way, we'll start off the video, we found out, uh, we'll start like tomorrow's video, we found out why the turbo blew up and it was entirely our fault and is incredibly embarrassing. And uh, you can look forward to seeing that in the beginning of tomorrow's video and another rad comp video, because I know you guys liked that last one. Love seeing the feedback. So uh, anyway, um, more not getting a lot of sleep, but uh, more drifting, so that's cool. All right, thanks guys, bye.